Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Diffuser Showdown. Imagine if YouTube allowed us to actually play music. It'd be so much easier. Hey girl friends, I'm Bianca Renee and you're watching Bianca Renee today. And today, we're gonna be putting all of the top blow dryer and diffusers head to head to kind of help you guys figure out who really makes the best diffuser for curly hair. If you are new here, welcome. I post new videos every Sunday all about curly hair product reviews. I'm basically your guinea pig so you don't have to waste your money. So if you like what you see today and you want to learn a thing or two about your curls, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Ms. Bianca Renee. Now I'm coming to you today with very flat hair because I haven't diffused yet. So I'm probably going to be using these throughout the video. So my hair is just going to get bigger and bigger as this video progresses. So first let me introduce to you the opponents. Who made the cut in the Diffuser Showdown? Starting off with our newest contender to the Diffuser world, also representing for the black owned brands, is Pattern Beauty. <laughs> the Pattern Blow Dryer. Next up, also known to be making your vacuums, it's not a dolphin, it's not a whale, it's a shark. And it's sister, Sharkeisha. The Shark Flex Style and the Shark Hyper Air. Kicking it old school, we've got a very affordable Amazon find, the Revlon. Next is a blow dryer made by one of the most popular curly hair brands with a diffuser that looks like a bowl of ramen, the Curl de Frigion. Taking it back to what used to be a fan favorite with a diffuser shaped as a hand, only to get completely canceled by the entire curly hair community, the Diva Dryer! Who said that? Who said that? Another fairly new, sleek, and stylish Sally Beauty original is the Ion Lux Supercharged Diffuser. And last but certainly not least, the blow dryer that everybody wants but just can't afford. It's bougie, it's powerful, it's probably the most expensive charger in your Ulta credit card. The Dyson. So I have a total of eight blow dryers that we're gonna be comparing today. All right, where do we get started? We have a lot of topics to cover, so I'm bringing out the burn book, because we're about to burn some of these brands, but we're not gonna burn our hair. Diffusers only. So I put a poll up on Instagram asking you guys what you wanted me to cover in the diffuser showdown, and you guys want me to talk about the price, the noise, the cord length, heat temperatures, the wattage, heat settings, diffuser size, warranty, number of attachments, uniqueness, and dry time. Let's get to it. Okay, let's start off with the diffuser size. Out of all the ones you're looking at here, the obvious largest diffuser absolutely goes to the Curlsmith de Frigion. This is the largest diffuser on the market. It's eight inches and it's literally made for curls so that you could fit all of your hair in here and do one little scoop to do. If you aren't really diffusing like this, it is pretty large, um, even going this way, but it's covering more ground, making it faster to diffuse because you're just, you're obviously hitting more hair at one time. So that just makes sense. Who else has a unique diffuser? The Shark Hyper Air. It has a little switch right here. See how they extend? So you can just diffuse like this, and then when you wanna hit your roots, you go like this and now it can actually get in there closer to your root. So I thought that was a really cool diffuser. And then if you want to talk about uniqueness of diffusers, <laughs> nothing gets more unique than a green hand. This used to be a favorite of mine. And the only reason I brought it in here is because, I mean, technically the diffuser didn't get canceled, more like the products. It's probably just the whole brand in general, but here we are. I thought we should talk about it. Because although this used to be my favorite, I never use this anymore. This is a smart idea because it's just gonna get right to your roots, distributing a very soft airflow. But now that I've moved on to bigger and better blow dryers, I've realized that this took a very long time to dry. Like it is good for the roots, but for the rest of the hair, 
it just wasn't fast enough. It will give your curls beautiful definition because it's like such a soft, you know, gentle diffuser, you're not gonna get as much frizz, so that makes sense. Aside from those three, everyone else is kind of like your standard circle diffuser. They kind of look the same. This is gonna be a lot. <laughs> Similar prong length, like nothing too special. Slightly bigger than one another, but you know, just standard. Let's talk about how they attach. Oh, the Shark Hyper Air is a click. Revlon, gotta push it on there. The Flex, you have to pull this lever down and then take it off. This is probably the most inconvenient uh, nozzle in my opinion. Ion is a magnet, just like the Dyson. Also a magnet. This, actually, this magnet feels stronger than the Ion for sure. The Curlsmith is a pop and click. And the pattern, you have to hold down these little buttons here and then it comes off. Apparently this was like a bragging point for them because people said that when they use the Dyson, the magnet just like falls off. How are y'all diffusing? Because as much as I've used my Dyson and the Ion, the diffusers have never just fallen off on me while I was diffusing. So I don't know how wild y'all are diffusing, but if you need something that's very sturdy, I mean, this is completely locked in. So there's that. But then when you take it off, it's gonna be like a two hand situation. And I like to do everything one handed. So when it comes to attachability, choose accordingly. Now let's talk about the level of noise. I don't have like a noise, uh, you know, reader, but let's just see how they all sound. I'm gonna need a lot of outlets. Starting off with the Dyson. Pattern. Ion. That one sounds pretty loud. Shark. That one sounds really loud too. Do the shark flex. Okay, the Dyson is definitely quieter. That's a lot louder. That's actually pretty quiet. I want to say Curl Smith and Dyson so far are sounding the quietest. Let me know if you guys agree. I will say Diva Curl has made a new blow dryer and diffuser. The new one, the whole body is lime green. And I did read that these attachments no longer fit the new ones. <laughs> How convenient. It's very Apple of them. They still have this guy, the annoying attachment. I never like this. It just doesn't look cute. And you get to like shove it on there and slide it in. They say it fits most blow dryers. It does not fit my Revlon. Doesn't fit the Shark. It fits Curl Smith. Doesn't fit the Pattern. Doesn't fit the Ion. Doesn't fit the Dyson. <laughs> so I do like going like this. Sound wise, I feel like the Dyson, the Curl Smith, and the Diva dryer actually were like the most like normal. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk numbers. You guys want to know about the price? One of the most Main factors when choosing a blow dryer is going to be your budget. And guess who's coming in at number one for most expensive blow dryer? You guessed it! The Dyson Supersonic Diffuser. This baby is $429.99 and is rarely ever on sale. I purchased this with my own money from Sephora and the only way I was able to get a little bit of a discount is because I got it during the Sephora semi-annual sale, is that what it's called? Super sale, spring sale. Guess why I had to make the Sephora squad. You know that big Sephora sale. If you're Rouge, you get 20%. If you're VIB, you get 15%. So I only got 15% off. It was something and I was gonna take it because that was a pretty penny. And as you can see, I don't need blow dryers, but I had to try this because everyone talks about it. And even though it is stupidly expensive, I do love this blow dryer. I often grab for it over my other ones all the time. We'll talk more about specs in a minute. Oh, it fell off! After I just said it never fell off. Something to keep note of. Coming in at number two at $299 is the Shark Flex. Now this one I kind of understand why it'd be a little bit more expensive because it's not only a diffuser, you could take this off. A lot of little levers on this one. Pull it down, boop. So once you go like this, you can attach this little attachment and now it becomes a curling wand, also acting like a Dyson Hyper Air dupe because it's kind of one of those things where the hair like flies to it and curls around. So the fact that you're getting a curling wand 
and a blow dryer and a diffuser that really makes it worth it because now you're not buying a blow dryer and diffuser and a curling wand. So that makes a little bit more sense, unlike that Dyson price. Coming in third place is the Ion Lux Supercharge, $249.99, kind of mid-range at this point. Next is the Shark Hyper Air, which is $229.99. Now I'm basing all these prices just off of the website, like directly from the retailer. You might be able to find this one cheaper at Walmart. I heard it's at Costco. I didn't do all the, you know, the price matching. But based off of the standard retail price, $229. This one is also compared to the Dyson, being considered a Dyson dupe because of the technology, but we'll talk about it. Next we have a tie for $189.99, the Curlsmith Diffrijon and the Pattern Blow Dryer. Same exact price, which one are you gonna get? The new Diva Dryer is $180. I feel like it used to be, was it always 180 or was it like 150? At the time I remember it being really expensive before I knew about Dyson and everything. Now it's one of the more affordable options. But believe it or not, I have a diffuser that is a whopping $24.99. No, not, not $24.99, $24.99. I spend more at McDonald's. And that is Old Faithful, the Revlon. I got this one off of Amazon. I think even I paid at least, I don't know, 30 or 40 bucks, but $25? to essentially do the same thing as all the other ones. Let's talk about it. So what is the actual name of this one? So this is the Revlon Infrared Hair Dryer. Let me try it out and see how much volume I can get. So there's only a hot and a warm. It has high and low, and then it has a cool shot button. Okay, so the warm is just fine. I don't, need, I don't even think you need to go to the hot setting on here, maybe if your hair is soaking wet. The reason I actually bought this was because of my sister-in-law. She was using it straight out the shower on her wet hair and her hair looked great. I was impressed and bought it immediately, especially for that price. It does have the tourmaline ionic technology, ceramic, has uh, 1,875 watts, which spoiler alert is one of the higher wattages out of all my blow dryers. Um, so you just really get a lot for your money. If you think about it, let's say you bought this and it broke, right? You can buy 17 of these for the price of one Dyson blow dryer. <laughs> your mama, your dada, your sister, your cousin, your neighbors, the whole family could get one. Put it in their stocking. It's a great blow dryer. Look at my hair, I mean, it gets the job done. You gotta hold down the cool shot button, so there's that. But $25? I'm gonna use this in one of my next videos. I forgot I like this one. Yeah, so basically out of all the ones I have, some are $25, some are $430. What's your budget? What's in your wallet? <laughs> Okay, let's talk about number of attachments. Most blow dryers give you two. They're gonna give you the diffuser and like the standard concentrator nozzle. The blow dryer with the most attachments is the Dyson. Now this is new. When I bought this Dyson, I got like a weird little comb that I've never used. I got the concentrator nozzle, the diffuser attachment, I didn't even get a carrying case in this little special edition I got. And that was it. And then you have to pay like an additional, sometimes up to $50 for their other attachments. But when I checked on the website yesterday, on the little bundle that they currently have right now, you get four attachments and then when you check out, it says you could pick two more. So you're getting a total of six different attachments and the comb and a carrying case. So for that price, you better give me six attachments. Second place for most attachment goes to the Shark Flex tied with the Pattern Blow Dryer. Pattern has some really unique ones from this diffuser to this long tooth comb. This one for like brushing out your hair, which I think I'm gonna try today actually. And then the standard concentrator nozzle where the Shark Flex gives you the diffuser, the concentrator nozzle, a left and right wand, and I believe, oh, correction. I think this Shark Flex style has more options than the Dyson. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. There's eight different attachments. You have the left and right wrap curlers, 
the auto wrap curlers that are a little bit smaller, a wide tooth comb, a styling concentrator, a round brush, an oval brush, a paddle brush, and the diffuser. If you want the bundle of all of them, that does raise this price up to $279, but it's still cheaper than the Dyson. So now we have Shark Flex, Dyson, then Pattern with Four, Curlsmith comes with three that I was excited about. It has the large diffuser, it has a concentrator nozzle, and one that looks like a pick to kind of give you some more volume. And then all the other ones only give you two, the diffuser and the concentrator nozzle. Attachments matter, so keep that in mind when choosing. Okay, now let's talk power, wattage, intensity, what's gonna give me a lot of airflow to dry my hair really fast. Who would you think is in the top spot for wattage and power. In my mind, my guess was Dyson because it's so expensive, but it's not. And it's like really not. The top spot with 2000 watts goes to the Curlsmith de Frigion. Let me see what 2000 watts feels like. I would think that the most powerful one would feel like a really strong breeze but the diffuser does such a good job at like concentrating the air that you don't have like a really harsh airflow. It's still very soft and they did that on purpose to be gentle with our curls. So that's interesting. I don't think it feels the strongest when you actually use it. Second place, we have a three-way tie with 1,875 watts. That goes to the pattern, the ion, and out here hanging out with the contenders with the highest wattage second place $25 okay let's see what they feel like let's start off with the ion this airflow definitely feels stronger not as soft as the curl smith one it might not be a bad thing if you're in a rush and you just really want a lot of air like on your curls let's try the pattern at full speed solid airflow on this one too and let's see what the other red one does definitely lighter so when it comes to like how it feels, I would say the Ion feels most powerful than the pattern, than the Revlon. And I did see the Revlon on an article that said it would win for best blow dryer to not over dry your curls. And I can see that because it's not too much airflow. I guess it depends on what you like. Next in line is the Shark Air, which is 1,680 watts. Let's try you. For being as a hunky dunky as this is, that was a pretty light airflow. I would compare this to the airflow of the Curlsmith and Revlon. Maybe a little bit more than the Revlon. Uh, Dyson, let's see how you feel. Pretty light. Interesting. Dyson has 1,600. It's in the second lowest spot of watts and the lowest wattage goes to the Shark Flex. <laughs> Just so you guys know. <laughs> Look what I've done. Oh my God. It's still pretty soft though. So what I've learned is the wattage does not equal the strength of the airflow. Did you guys know that? Next up, let's talk about the heat temperatures. I actually was not able to find how hot each blow dryer got on anyone's website. The only one that I was able to find was Dyson and the Dyson can get up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That is very hot. Um, if you know any of the specs for any of the blow dryers we're talking about, please leave a comment down below and let me know. I wasn't able to find it. But I will tell you which blow dryers I believe get too hot for curly hair on certain settings. So in general, you're always gonna wanna diffuse your hair on a medium heat. You never really wanna go full heat. If you do wanna go full heat because you're in a rush or whatever it may be, you want to use it while your hair is soaking wet and then switch to a medium heat and then also hit that cool shot button. So let's talk about how the blow dryer actually feels heat wise and that cool shot button. So the Dyson, I would only be using it on the coolest heat setting. The lowest one is still pretty hot. So if you go all the way up to the third one, I could see you possibly getting heat damage or at least some dryness if you overuse your blow dryer on the highest setting. So with the Dyson, keep it with the lowest one. With the cool shot button, you do have to push down the button, it doesn't stay. Um, but now let's think about the button placement. When using this, most curly girls are always diffusing like upside down right at an angle. You do things with your thumb, but you have to flip it around and then go like this. And then also reach up, 
for the fan speeds and the heat controls all the way up top here. So when it comes to like using it, you kind of have to like stop, change, and then do what you want to do. Um, if you are straightening your hair and you're changing it to like the concentrator nozzle, maybe for straight hair the buttons make more sense because you're going to go like this and now your thumb is here to push the buttons You kind of slide up. But for curly hair and knowing how we're always like this, I don't know. The buttons might not be in the best placement for curls. Ion Lux. The on and off switch is right by the thumb and then on the front you have the three heat settings, three fan speeds, and a cool shot button. So the cool shot button isn't like the other ones where you hold it down and it releases cold air. You actually can just make a low, medium, or high cool setting. So right now it's cool, stronger cool, and strongest cool. Same with the Ion, I think the strongest one is probably too hot. When you feel like you start to smell your hair, kind of like, not burning, but you smell your hair. I kind of get that vibe on the highest setting on this one and on the Dyson. The other thing I don't like about this one is that the heat and the fan speed have to correlate. So I can't do a low heat setting at a high fan speed. I have to do low heat, low fan speed, medium heat, medium fan speed, high heat, high fan speed. You can't interchange, which is kind of weird when you really think about it. I would rather do high fan speed at a lower heat setting, but it doesn't let you do that. Shark Air, three fan speeds, three heat settings, power button on the back, cool shot button on the front. Conclusion, I like the first heat setting on here. It's hot enough for our curl, and I love when a diffuser can go on the first level and still be warm enough. Maybe the middle setting, definitely wouldn't have to go high heat just for our curls. This one you can change between fan speed and heat. You could switch it up, but it is all the way back here, which isn't the most convenient when you're trying to do things. Revlon I briefly talked about only has low and high, no middle ground, and it has warm and hot. The cool shot button you do have to hold down, and I think the warm setting is just fine for the Revlon. The Shark Flex style really switched it up by having all the controls down here at the bottom. The buttons are flushed, so there's three heat settings, three fan speeds, power buttons down here, and a cool shot button. Yeah, the top level smells like fire, <laughs> but the first one is a pretty warm, it's like a coolish warm. I probably see myself using the medium heat setting on this one and then going down to the first, probably will need the high heat as well. Cool shot button you have to hold down while you're using to activate. But now let's talk about the two brands that really have our curls in mind and listen to their audience. Now Pattern has three heat settings, only two fan speeds. It has an ion button, so basically every blow dryer has ion technology. Everyone tries to make it seem like this cool thing that's supposed to reduce frizz, seal your cuticles, make your hair shiny, reduce heat damage. Pattern for some reason said, let's make that optional. So if you don't have ion technology, you could get more volume on fine hair, which is how they promote it. But you gotta push that button on or off if you want to use it. The cool shot button, they actually have it so it locks. So you push to activate and then it could just stay cool versus you having to hold down anything. I think I've even said this in my pattern video. I feel like the heating settings on this blow dryer are perfect. Like the high is just enough to be more hot but not like overbearing. Middle is like perfect but even if you just need like a refresh type of diffuse, the low setting is also great. So I love the heat settings on the pattern one. Having only two fan speeds I guess works, low or high. Um, and then the permanent cool shot is also really cool. When it comes to button placement, they switched up and said, so let's put it on the side. So <laughs> I guess when you're diffusing, your thumb is here, but then if you're doing like some sideways stuff, I guess your thumb does end up like on the side, but then you gotta switch this way. I don't know, you're kind of moving it around to reach all the buttons. Curlsmith, with our curls in mind, they have everything right on the front, which is I feel like just most normal. So now when I'm diffusing, I can switch from low meat or meat. That's not a setting. <laughs> low, medium, heat, low or high without even looking. So I, could just, I don't have to look. I could just be flipping the switches instead of even sideways. So I feel like that just makes more sense when you hold it 
and then the cool shot button also stays so you don't have to hold it so the fact that like pattern beauty is a hair care brand for natural hair curl smith is also a brand for curly hair i think they knew that we don't like those kind of things and they made the blow dryer with us in mind versus everyone else is kind of made for straight hair let's be honest but even on the highest heat setting of the curl smith it is not getting hot so i don't see you accidentally getting heat damage with the curl smith one or the pattern beauty one these were really made for our curls so with all that said you're probably thinking okay what i really want to know is the dry time i only have 10 minutes to get out the door and i don't want to spend my entire day diffusing i can tell you right now the diva curl we were diffusing for hours because it just does take a long time with this diffuser so if you're looking for speed i wouldn't recommend the diva curl one in my past comparison videos i have timed myself using the Dyson, the Curl Smith, the Pattern, and the Ion, and they all kind of took about 10 minutes for me. It's actually really hard to talk about the fastest dry time because there's so many factors that come into play when you're diffusing your hair that involve human error. So if you are diffusing really thick hair versus fine hair, that's gonna be two different dry times. If you have short hair versus long hair, that's gonna play a factor. Your porosity, how fast water absorbs into your hair versus how much is being dried by the blow dryer is gonna make a factor. The products that you use, if you use a gel that creates a cast when it dries, that's gonna dry faster than a hair that is like super moisturized with a bunch of creams. So it's kind of hard to say because it's going to depend on your routine. I feel like I have it when I'm in a rush I do often reach for my Dyson, but now after doing this battle, I realize that it doesn't even have the highest wattages. It does get really hot, but that's not always a good thing. I even read this article that also did a super comparison of all blow dryers, and even they said not one blow dryer really dried their hair like too much faster than the next. They all kind of relatively do the same thing. I know that's probably not the answer you're looking for, but I know I am able to dry my hair really fast when I, one, use a gel that's gonna create a cast on my hair. I do prefer to air dry first, so keep that in mind when I do my hair. I don't think I could say that like, this blow dryer takes me an hour to blow dry and this one takes me five minutes. You know what I mean? Cord length. Let's go measure. And now for the length test of the longest cord goes to Curl Smith. Just made it. The Curl Smith the Frigion has the longest cord. Second place would be the Ion Lux. Then I'd probably say it's between the Shark Flex and the Dyson. Then the Shark Air and the Diva Curl was actually pretty close too. The shortest ones were Revlon and Pattern didn't give us much cord. Well, there you have it. Cause the length definitely matters. If you want to reach that outlet, it could make or break you. Now, when it comes to warranty, I would say your best bet would be the expensive ones like Dyson and Shark. These are also two brands that make vacuums. So they just kind of know that people are expecting warranties with these high price items. They both offer a two year warranty. Dyson has two years parts and labor and Shark has two year limited warranty where it's already included. You don't have to like fill out any paperwork. I know Pattern also has two years. It's kind of like you had to search for it. When you go on the Curlsmith website, it doesn't have anything like upfront about the warranty. It might be like a customer service situation. Uh, same with like, you know, Revlon from Amazon and Ion. I don't see too much upfront about it. So you might have to apply for it, pay for one, or, you know, read that fine print. But if you just want like a very easy, simple warranty situation, Dyson or Shark. And last but not least, let me just tell you the unique features of each one that might just further convince you into buying that blow dryer. So like I said with Curl Smith, it's really made with our curls in mind. Super large bowl. If you diffuse like this and you like all your hair in there and you want it to be fastly covered at a nice even airflow, that's not going to overheat your curls. Feels comfortable in the hand. Curl Smith might be for you. Standout feature for me aside from the large diffuser is it has a little kickstand. So those two little prongs right here allow it to stand up and be hands-free. So if you really want to just 
diffuse like this, you could. And the permanent cool shot button. Standout features for pattern, the permanent cool shot button. And it's really pretty. So I think it might be the best looking blow dryer. I love things in color. The Dyson also comes really pretty colors. It says pattern right there on the grill. Uh, it has the ion button if you wanna turn it off, maybe get more volume if you have fine hair. And if you don't like the magnetic type of diffusers, it's very sturdy because of the clicking technology here. Dyson, I mean, fan favorite. There's a pro edition for professionals. They're using it in the salons. It comes in a lot of pretty colors. It has a lot of pretty cases. It has a lot of cool attachments. I think the attachments is probably like the biggest seller for the Dyson as well as it just working really well and gives me frizz free results. The Shark biggest feature is the raising of the prongs. The Shark Flex just does so many different things. If you're looking for a curling wand and a blow dryer and a diffuser, it's just so many things all together. The Ion Lux Supercharge has a memory recovery, so whatever your last settings were, next time you plug it in, it's gonna be those same settings, remembering how you like to diffuse your hair. It also has that ultra fast airflow for faster drying. Diva Curl standout feature would be the very unique diffuser, but I don't know if you want to support Diva Curl right now. And the best standout feature from the Revlon is that it's only $25. And the last important spec I think we should talk about is the weight. Because you're holding it, you don't want it to be too heavy. When it comes to the lightest blow dryer just the base alone without the diffuser is the shark flex style it's only one pound but once you put the diffuser on which is actually kind of heavy it takes it down to the third spot when it comes to the weight with the diffuser the lightest blow dryer with the diffuser attachment is the Revlon coming in at the number one spot it is the second lightest without the diffuser and the top lightest with the diffuser only one pound five ounces now I will say, don't quote me on these numbers because I was literally weighing these all on my food scale. Might not be the most accurate when it comes to numbers, but just so I was consistent, I did weigh all of them on the scale just to see which one was heavier, which one is lighter. And the heaviest blow dryer getting up to two pounds is the Shark Hyper Air. This is really heavy. It's heavy on its own and then gets even heavier with the diffuser. So the heaviest blow dryer diffuser is the Shark Air. The second heaviest is the Curl Smith because this diffuser makes it heavy. So to compare, the Shark Air was two pounds, one ounce, and the Curl Smith was one pound, 12 ounce. So they're both up there, but this one is definitely the heaviest. And the two lightest being the Revlon and the Ion Lux, both very lightweight. All right, we did it. We compared all of the top blow dryer and diffusers that I own. I hope this was helpful for you and I hope you can decide which one you want. I'm really curious though, what were the standout features that really just were the deciding factor for you? Which blow dryer do you own? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you wanna swap it out? Let us know all your thoughts below so we could help more people make a decision. If I absolutely had to choose, I mean the Revlon one, if you're on a budget, just get the Revlon one. They all do the same thing. Your hair is gonna dry eventually. It has really high wattage. It's a great blow dryer that's just gonna get the job done. If you wanna be bougie and stunt, get the Dyson. If you want to support Tracy Ellis Ross and you like the nice brown shade and you think it looks pretty, beautiful heat settings no matter what setting you're on. If you're looking for something made for curls that has a large bowl with a very soft airflow and it's not gonna give you any heat damage, get the Curl Smith one. I will suggest that you get a diffuser just so you own one because your curls will look different. And I personally diffuse my hair every day, even on my refresh days. I just love how it makes my curls look. I have fine hair. I need it to get the volume and just to dry faster. Otherwise it might take seven to 10 business days. If you enjoyed this blow dryer showdown, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I put a lot of work, did a lot of research in this video, so I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments below. Also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Ms. Bianca Renee and subscribe so you don't miss any more curly hair helpful tips. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today.